This is your host, Prophetess Denise Kelly. We are here for another uh, series of ABCs of Bible through the eyes of a prophetess. Today, we will be talking about foot washing. What is the significance of foot washing is, where it came from, and what does it mean to Christians today? Because it is still something that we do today, or we should be doing today, um, but we may not necessarily be doing that. And so I just want to uh, thank you guys for sharing my videos and, and liking them and subscribing or uh, I just appreciate it all. We uh, hear my uh, team that comes with me to, to have Bible study. We are just appreciative of what God is currently doing. We love the Lord. And we just want to uh, share the gospel all over the world um, and to, you know, get an understanding of what really is going on and why God put particular things in the Bible. And so through ABCs of the Bible and our regular Bible study, which is at 7, 7 p.m. on Wednesdays, uh, we are just going through uh, the uh, Bible, the book, uh, I've written or writing a book, ABCs of the Bible Through the Eyes of a Prophetess. And so this is uh, the formal training uh, for that. Uh, and then when I'm done, then we'll, I'll publish the book and then we'll, we'll go from there. But we just want to thank you guys for coming. I'm going to go ahead and pray because it's already 7.01. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity. Love you and appreciate you all so much for all that you do for us. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you a lot. If there's anyone on here, Lord God, that needs your comfort and your peace, your joy, your love, we're asking that you would comfort them right now. Father God, if there's anything, Lord God, that anyone on here that needs healing, we're asking that you would heal them right now in the name of Jesus. We know what's going on in the country, Father God. And we just ask that you would give us the strength, Lord God, to speak when. We need to speak and to be silent when it's time to be silent. We love you, God, and we appreciate you. It's in praying for all families that are affected by not only the pandemic, but the looting and all of the things that are going on with uh, George uh, Floyd. Uh, and so we're just asking that you would just touch right now, Lord God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, it looks like. We're going to go ahead and get started. So, let me make sure there's nobody waiting in the waiting room. So, I currently don't see anybody uh, in the waiting room. So, I'm going to go ahead and sing a song. I had this song that I wrote. It's called, uh, Lord, Let Your Blessings Follow Me. Uh, by Denise Kelly, Denise and Dominique Kelly, my daughter, my baby girl, uh, helped me write this song. And so I'm going to sing it solo, but um, just know that it's actually supposed to be two parts, two people in the song. So, Lord, let your blessings Fall on me, fall on me, Lord, let your blessing fall on me, fall on me, at night I wait alone. But you shelter me from harm. You keep me close and warm in the comfort of your arm. You're always there on time. You give me peace of mind. Another love I could not find. Your grace and mercy is so kind. Lord, let your blessing 
Fall on me. Fall on me. Lord, let your blessing fall on me. Fall on me by the power you give to me. All men are able to see that your love is the key. And you'll always hear my plea. You shower me, he in each and every way. You teach me what to say. And you said it'll be okay. Lord, let your blessing fall on me, fall on me. Lord, let your blessing fall on me. All right, all right, all right. So let's get it started. Brother Man is not here today. He had to work. So I'm going to start out with his two scriptures. I'm just going to read them and uh, because I put him on here. So, so we're going to start out in Genesis, the 18th chapter. Started with verse 4. Genesis 18 and 4. And the topic today is foot washing. Foot washing? Do what? Foot washing? Foot washing. So 18 and 4. This is an easy one. So 18 and 4 it says, Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree and i will bring you a morsel of bread and five says i will bring you a morsel of bread that you may refresh your heart after that you have passed in so much as ye have come unto your servant and so this is uh abraham uh greeting the uh angels and god uh before they go to Sodom and uh, Gomorrah. This is them, them getting the promise that they would have a son, Isaac, um, and that they would have a seed in their own, in, through Sarah, through their own loins. And so they greeted their guests by washing feet. And let's look over to Genesis 19 and 2. Genesis 19 and 2 said, he said, Hear my Lord, and this is actually Lot. Hear my Lord, turn into your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet that you may rise early and go your way. So normally, in back in that time, of course, we know that they lived in the desert. Back in that time, they washed feet. Uh, they had basins, they washed their feet, they washed their hands. Obviously, their hands were dusty. But we're going to talk about how, what it, more it means than just washing of the feet. So, my sister has verse Luke uh, 7 and 44. And so, tell me what you uh, got out of that, sis. Well, when I read the scripture, I said, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> I want to be honest. I, I still. So you want realness here? Huh? I can't do anything but be that. Anyway, gave me that. Then he turned toward the woman and said, "Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house. You didn't. This is NIV, of course. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. Um. And of course, they was telling me, you know. Don't have to just look at that scripture. You can look at some scriptures as well too. 
Um, and I guess what I got out of it is, is just <laughs> Jesus letting Simon know that um, what do you what's important, what are you placing what is it that you're making so important more important than actually spending time with him? I guess so that's kind of what I was thinking. Um, that's 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 good. That's good. Yeah. And that, and also Jesus was, you know, chastising him. <laughs> he was chastising. He was telling him, "I came into your house." We that's the reason why I read Genesis for the two Genesis verses prior to that because it was a custom for them to wash the feet uh, when they called guests. But he wasn't really. He called him as a guest. He wanted him to come, but he only did it because, you know, he was famous. He he was looking after fame. He wasn't really actually looking after the savior. And the woman that he's talking about is the woman with the alabaster box that washed Jesus' feet before he uh, uh, was preparing for burial. And how she came in through the crowd and passed everyone. And, and, and it didn't matter because what her goal was is to reach Jesus. Sometimes we have to pull away from distractions or anything like that that would hinder us uh, from getting to Jesus. And got to turn down the noise and get to Jesus. All right then. So, Mister, 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 Mister Gary, you up? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, "Well reported, uh, for good works. If she have brought up children, if she have large strangers, if she have washed the same feet, if she have." Uh, Relieve the affliction if she have diligently followed every good work. That's a widow. That's classified as a widow. Uh, anybody can't hold that title just because you are, you know what I mean? Just because you're out here and you wearing a dress and you're doing this, doing that, you can't, you're not a widow. A widow fits qualification and needs the qualification. And uh, I, I, I compare that to a virtuous woman from Proverbs. Uh, and, and when I look at all that, I look at what God gave me, uh, Vanessa. And, 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 and she holds those qualifications, those, those criteria. And, and I'm so glad that God uh, gave me a scriptural woman. Amen. And, uh -huh. Amen. 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 That's good. That's good. So let's look at, we're not going to talk about a lot of verses today. I mean, we are, I'm going to read some more verses, but I kind of want us to have a conversation because I really want to talk. I want to talk about what God really revealed to me when it came to this, this foot washing thing. But I do got to get some more verses. So let's look at John 13. John 13. And I'm going uh, we're not going to read it because we are kind of familiar with these scriptures, right? Uh, John 13, 1 through 22 is actually when Jesus decided. So I'm going to paraphrase. I'm going to pick out some verses. Uh, but the, the total verses is going to be John 13, 1 through 22. But I'm not going to read them in their entirety. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down to verse 5. After that, he had poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel, which he was girded. And when he came to Peter, I think I'm Peter sometimes, either Peter or Paul, one of Peter. <laughs> Cutting off ears. Anyway, let me go on. <laughs> so when he came to Peter, Peter said, Lord, are you washing my feet? 
wait a minute now. Now, before he got to Peter, you know he had already watched how many people. In general, we're going to say five. We don't know for sure because we weren't there. Mm -hmm. But we're going to say he had been, he's sitting there looking at Jesus. And then they, the question asked is, is are you going to wash my feet too? So I'm going to come back to that. Put a pen right there and I'm going to read on. So then he answered him and said, what am I, uh, what, if, what am I, what I am doing? You do not understand. What I'm doing, you do not understand. But you will know after this. Put a pen right there. What's the after this? So then Peter says, you shall never wash my feet. <laughs> I told you, I'm Peter. I am Peter. And Peter said, and Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, bro, I put that in there. It's not in the scripture. If I don't wash your feet, bro, you don't have no part with me. In other words, if I don't wash your feet, ain't no use in you coming with me, bro. It's over. You might as well turn around and go on back to the house. Here's Peter's response. Peter said, I mean, Jesus said, Peter says to, to him, Lord, not only my feet, but my hands and my head <laughs> also. Are these two different Peters? Do what? Are these two different Peters, Peter and Simon Peter? It's Simon Peter. They're both the same Peters? Yeah. Simon Peter and Peter is the same Peter. It's weird how they say Peter sometimes and they say Simon Peter. Anyway, okay. Yeah, it's the way it's kind of like I don't want to talk down Latinos, but Latinos, if you ever notice their names, they have two names. They have the mother's side of the name and the father's side of the name. I'm gonna leave that alone right there. But that's pretty much the reason. It's talking about heritage and then talking about the previous father, the father and the, the son. Okay. We ain't, gonna, we ain't gonna keep going. Hey, that's history right there. So Jesus said to him, "He who bathes need, need who he who has bathed needs only wash his feet." He who basically, if you took a bath, the only thing I need to do is wash your feet to make you clean. And I'm paraphrasing, and I'm gonna put in there, put a pen right there again. You are clean, but not all of you. Who is he talking about? We're going to talk about that in a minute. Mm. For he knew. Who was he talking about? Judas is scary. That's right. That's who he was talking because he already knew who was going to betray him. Amen. So he says, "You do." he said, do you know what I have done? So he asked them, do you know what I've done? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, am I? And you say it well, because I am the teacher. <laughs> That's what he said. And then he said, your Lord and teacher washed your feet. So you ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given this as an, ex I'm paraphrasing, he, I'm giving you an example of what to do. Most assuredly, I've said that the servant is not greater than the master, nor is the is he sent greater than he who sent him. So in other words, if I can break down and do it, you need to as well. And he said after that, then he blessed the thing. So then uh, it, it goes on, but I'm going to stop there because I want to talk about just a few things right there. So let's go back up. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, my Lord. Jesus. Okay, so let's go back up. So first, Jesus, to be able to wash someone's feet, you got to do what? Get some water. Got to get some water. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about position. 
What position you gonna be in when you wash somebody's feet? Position on your knees. You're gonna be on your knees. You're gonna be humble. You're gonna be able to get in a position to be able to serve someone else. See, the problem with the world today is everybody standing and ain't nobody on their knees. Amen. Nobody's being humble and asking God to show them how and what to do next. But Jesus gives us a perfect example by washing the feet because it's more than just about washing the feet. It's about being a servant and being humble and being able to, to not be the center of attention. Amen. Glory to God. So then he says, so that's where I put my first pen. He said, you don't understand what I'm doing. But I'm teaching you, just like I taught you all the parables. He didn't say, I'm paraphrasing. It, just like I taught you all the parables, and each parable had a lesson. This is not, I'm not just doing this just because I can. But I'm doing this to teach you something. How that each and every one of you got to be able and willing to serve to be able to carry my word. You are going to be ostracized. Even in this little uh, opening, he is he really trying to tell him everybody that everybody that thought you was gonna be king and queen and and, and been powerful and everything like that, that's not the way in. So he's telling them this is not the way in. The way in is humility. The way in, the way up is down. Ooh, glory to God. So he's letting them know that you got to be able to be a servant. You got to be humble enough to be able to do what I'm doing. Now, if I'm your master, your teacher, your, your, your friend, your confidant, and I can do it, you sure enough better be able to. So that's the second piece. So then he says, you don't know what you don't know why I'm doing this. I'm trying to teach you something. I'm trying to show you something. So I want to talk about Peter for just a moment because Peter is no different than many people. And what I mean by that is Peter was lost sight of what was actually happening. The only thing he was thinking of is, uh, wait a minute, <laughs> you, <laughs> you the master. Why would you be getting down here with me? Why would you wash my feet? So he had lost sight of what God was trying to teach him even in that. And we know that Jesus did things. He cutting off people's ears. I mean, you know what I'm saying. He just he does that. That's he's he's bold. He's fast. He the one got out the boat. The rest of them didn't get out. He the one got out the boat. Start walking on water. So he needs. He's the one that is really needing to be taught because his role in the kingdom, his role as far as the apostles is going to be great. So he has to. He has to learn. He has to know that the way up is down. And so, washing feet. So he tells them, he tells them, ooh, glory to God. Then the next thing he says in verse 10, he says, he says, ooh, I just got to look at it one more time. Because he said, because this is powerful right here. He said, if you took a bath, I don't think you need to wash your feet. What exactly is he saying? He's not literally, he's saying two things here. He is saying if you took a bath, the only thing you need to wash is your feet. But the, the other thing he's saying is if you've accepted Christ as your Savior, if you have surrendered your life on over to him, then the only thing you need to do to continue to walk in God is to repent and get in right standing with him, which is going what? Down to go up. And so in that, he's telling them, you're already clean. You already have accepted me as your savior for us. Because, you know, the Holy Ghost hadn't came yet, but you already have accepted me as your savior. So the only thing you need to do now is to repent and get back in right standing. Do the old things that got you there back over again. In other words, get where you're supposed to be. You need to be what? Down. So you can do what? Go up. All right. 
So then he says, he said, not all of y'all clean. Yeah. Now, we can split it in our terms today. We in the church house. Everybody ain't saved. Some people go to church for different reasons. Some people go to church to get a wife. Some people go to church to get a husband. Some people go to church to show off their new outfit or their new hats. Fashion show. Some people go to church because it's a, it's, it's a business or so it's a networking thing. So I can get people at the church for my business. Other people go to church for prestige because I go to this church and I'm important because there's lawyers that go here. There's teachers that go here. There's judges that go here. So, you know, I must be important as well. But all of those are not reasons to be going to church. Maybe it's a reason to go to church, but it's not a reason to be serving God. So you don't serve him in that manner. And I'm not saying he can't use your gift. What I'm saying is you have your focuses on. Your focus is not in the right place. So then Jesus, he kind of gets on his high horse. I can just imagine him raising up and talking loud at this point when he tells them that you are not greater than I. If I can humble myself to wash your feet, then you need to humble yourself to wash your brothers, one another's feet. What exactly is Jesus saying? He's not just talking about the feet. He's actually telling us that in our humility and love for one another, we will be able to bring our brothers into right standing with us, to help our brothers when they need it, to feed those that need to be fed, to cleanse those that need to be, to correct those that need to be corrected in love, to help them if they keep falling, help pick them up. To wash their feet. To comfort them when they need love. To share with them the good news of Christ. To let them know that you can't fall too far for God. There's nowhere you can hide from him. He is everywhere. He's reminding them that you must do what? Go down. To go up. So, then the last part. We're almost through it, and then we're going to talk about it. So then he says, after he did all of that fuss, he did what? He blessed them. You see, the problem with uh, uh, the problem with some of the things that's going on around us, and I'm not going to always say the church, though, because that's where I'm where I'm at. <laughs> the problem with it is you quick to tell me what's wrong. You're quick to show me my wrong and my faults and all of this stuff, but you ain't telling me how to get right. How am I supposed to change? What do I need to do? But we're not quick to do that. We're quick to say, now you know you was wrong, right? You know the Bible says. You know the Bible says this, that, and the other about what you did. Well, is there, I know there's got to be a scripture somewhere in here that tells me how I can walk in the light, how I can do right. I, I know there's got to be one of them too. So when you tell so busy telling me what's wrong, please try to tell me what's right. Instruct me. That's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to be just condemning me and beat me over the head with my own Bible. You're supposed to be helping me, loving me, comforting me, Correcting me, yes, but not just correcting me. There's a whole bunch of lists on there besides correction. That's only one. And so that's one of the things I have a problem with. And I think we get so caught up, you know, to preach the word of God. But sometimes we got to be taught to really get it, to really break it down on our level so that we can understand you know, that he, hooping and hollering is good. It make you feel good, too. But one time, I want to tell y'all a story. And then we're going to talk about foot washing. And what y'all, and then I'm going to tell you what it means and all that good stuff. So, one time, 
we was having, I mean, we were having church. This is my old church in Oklahoma. I ain't going to tell you the name of it because I ain't going to do that. And I ain't going to call his name. But Bishop was going, boy. He was, ah, he was, he was singing. So one time he was singing. We was, we was, every, I've been telling you, spirit was high. He was singing. So let me tell you what uh, Bishop said. Bishop was singing. La, 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 la. La 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 people falling out of the spirit. Falling, literally falling out of the spirit. And when my bishop, when he gets to really feeling the spirit, he starts singing like uh, Mariah Carey. <laughs> you can't say thing he said. Whatever he said, you you missed it. It's over. Cause he don't speak language at that point. I said all this that to say this that that height that you no know, busyness that's good. It's good for the spirit. So I'm, I'm not condemning that. But at the end of the day, what did he say? La 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 la. la. What does that mean? Oh, it's a song. It's a song. That's what it is. He, in other words, he's saying praise him. I get that. Do I praise him all day long? Do I praise him when my boss cuts me out? Do I praise him? How do I handle that? You see what I'm saying? So we need both. Like the guy said in lessons before dying, he needs your both. He needed the preacher. <laughs> he did the way with man. <laughs> he did the teacher and the preacher. But what I'm saying is, sometimes we get so caught up on one thing, and 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 we we even raise up one gift over another. But we need them all. Five fingers on my hand, right? Well, four fingers in the thumb, but five fingers, right? Fivefold ministry. This is our example of what God tells us to do. Guess what that means? Every last one of these is needed. Not just the pastor. Not just the apostle. Not just the evangelist. Not just the teacher. All of them are needed. I didn't forget the prophetess. I just didn't want to put that out there since y'all already know this one color. So I didn't want to throw it out there like, oh. But so foot washing is was not only just a tradition of men. It wasn't just a tradition of men. It was God's opening up the door to remind us that servitude is what leads us to him. We must do what? Get down to come up. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So let me give you a few things about foot washing it originated from god of course it's all about servitude and humility uh, it's also water symbolizes the anointing of god uh covenant and restoration and repentance and cleansing so let's talk about any part of the lesson any part of the lesson let's talk about any part of the lesson I didn't know if there was a particular question or something. Oh, I need a question. Okay, so let me let me pull my Bible back out. I didn't know if you needed a question. So let's do a question. I got some questions. Hold on. Let me let me pull my scriptures back on. So so when in verse seven, when he said. You will know after this. I didn't really talk about that, but kind of give me an idea of what you think that meant. Okay, say it again. In verse 7, at the end, where he said, you will know after this. After I teach you this, you don't really know what I'm doing, but you will know soon enough. Right. right. Is that a question? Question.
This question for us? Like, it's a question for yes! Yes! He did? I mean, yeah, he's, he's serving, he's serving those, he's serving them, you know, basically showing them what serving is as well and serving them and basically yeah. letting them okay, okay. Well, I look like he's about to say so. No, I was just, uh, 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 feeding on what she was saying and what she was trying to go with. Okay, so when when Peter said, you will never wash my feet, what is that a sign of? I didn't talk about it, but when you hear it, you can kind of tell what kind of sign, what's the sign, what's that sign of? Put it in the mud on a pedestal, like, like, you can't, there's no way, you're Jesus, how could you be washing my feet? No way, basically. So he's putting Jesus above him, basically. Yeah. That's right. No, no, that's good. That's that's good. So what do you what do you think about it? No, that's that's that's, that's right. He was elevating the master. You know, letting the master know, man, I I, I can't understand that. I can't perceive the master and Lord washing my feet or nobody. You see. And then, you know, you can look at it another way. You could have been saying, look, man, uh, you, uh, you don't need to wash my feet, you know. Uh, 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 but he, 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 he was reverent, uh Christ, letting Christ know, man, you know, you, 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 you shouldn't do that, you know, because I'm nobody. Who am I? You know, anyway, that, that, that's, that's what I was looking at. Right. That's, that's good. That's good. But I'm going to point out one more, one more part because all of that was good. It's some of pride. So pride. He's he's pride, prideful to a certain extent. Like you can wash my feet. Like you can wash my feet. So it's also a sign of pride. And if we know Peter and the reason why I identify with Peter because sometimes we just walk we walk in pride sometimes. We just do. We just do. But that was good. All of that was good. So, so when he, you already answered this one, but so this is a freebie. So when he said, nah, all of y'all are clean, who is he talking about? What'd you say? I'm sorry. When he said, when Jesus said, not all of y'all, not all of you are clean, who is he talking about? Oh, so my Judas. Judas. Uh, uh-huh. Uh, the cleanness, it wasn't about the water. That's right. So it was about the heart, you know, the the, 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 the cleaning of the heart, the, 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 the washing of the water, the Holy Spirit, have it cleaned your heart. And it hadn't cleaned everybody's heart. Everybody's heart wasn't clean. They wasn't regenerated. They wasn't renewed. You know, they wasn't clean. Right. Wasn't clean. Somebody, somebody here saved. Somebody here then, then, then felt the goodness of the Holy Spirit. Somebody been washed in the blood. Uh, but everybody have it. And right. at, at the trail, you hadn't been. That's right. That's right. So, what else? One more question. So I'm going to do this in reverse. Can the servant be greater than the master? Mm. Not be greater than the man. That's right. That's right. So the gifts that God has blessed us with and got how God it all came from him. So I'll never be greater than the master. I can only be I can only be as good as close to get as close to him as I possibly can and share the love with him and be uh try to be more and more like him. Amen. Now, I know this is a right. different this is a different lesson in, in reference to foot washing, but here's something I want us to do. So I want you guys to take a moment, however, whenever you can before the next uh, time, and I want you to anoint your feet. I want you to put some anointing oil in some water and wash each other's feet. Amen. 
and we're gonna do the same. What do you mean? He don't know it yet, but we're gonna do the same. <laughs> we're gonna do the same. Y'all have any questions? Any more comments? We'll do it before we go to bed tonight. Because I feel that it's not you speaking, it's the Holy Spirit. If I, the Lord and Savior, can wash your feet, how much more could you wash your other feet? You see, and I think we should do that to come down off the high hole that some of us might allow ourselves to get up on. Mm -hmm. We humble ourselves that we might be lifted by Christ. You know, so I, I think that's uh, that needs to be done. Amen. 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 All right. Well, uh, I don't have anything else. So uh, when you guys can pray us out. Lord, thank you for this time of Bible study. Thank you for the um, for Denise who was able to bring the word um, based on what you gave her to, to bring to the table, Lord Jesus. I pray that you just watch over and God as you see fit, Lord. I pray that you watch over each and every one of our family members, Lord. Um, any any concerns that we may have, Lord, we lay them before you at this point in time, Lord, and just asking you to be done in, in that, that area of our lives, Lord. I pray you continue to seek your word and your will for our lives and pray that we uh, never forget to continue to, if, even if we fall to the wayside, that we continue to seek you and seek your will for our lives, Lord. And you always are the one we go to for any help that we may need. I thank you, Lord, and I send all of your praises. Uh, pray this in your precious name. Amen. 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 It says 43 minutes. So I hope I didn't miss nothing. <laughs> It'll be all right. It'll be all right. And it's not that expensive. It'll oh. be, it's what God did. So. He, he must know what he, he know what he's doing. That's all I can say. Because I didn't see nothing. Ah! All right now. Well, I love you guys. Um, I will see you guys soon, though.